In this video, we'll be talking about the challenges in stream processing. The first one is processing out of order data. So let's understand what is out of order data. So for any kind of analysis, the order of events do matter. Let's take an example of the clickstream analysis. So let's assume we have certain events at time t1, t2, t3, t4, and these all events, these all events lie within a 10 minute window and there were some actions taken at time t1 let's say impression impression is just let's say a view where user opened a page and click is something like login button click right so now within this time frame we have some impressions and we have some clicks now if the processing engine wants to aggregate let's say we have a question for example, give me the number of impressions and number of clicks between this time frame T1 and T4. So the correct result will be click 2 and impression 2. But let's assume that this event T2 is a little delayed due to network fluctuations or anything. Then what will happen? The incorrect result will be click 1 and impression 2 because T2 did not reach processing engine in real time it was late by five minutes now how to handle this kind of out of order data so in spark we do have a concept of watermarking so you know you you need to ask the question from your business like how can how late can your data be for example if you want to aggregate your data in aggregate your incoming events now you need to tell the engine like for example my data can be late by 10 minutes and that is acceptable so the spark streaming engine will maintain the state and it will wait till the watermark time and then it will be correctly aggregating the the data the result in this case it is late by 5 minutes let's say and our watermark time was 10 minutes so spark will correctly aggregate that any data that is coming outside this watermark will be dropped will not be not will not be aggregated so this is one of the challenges uh, which is processing out of order data and spark streaming has the capability of watermarking to take care of this kind of scenarios so the next challenge in stream processing application is maintaining large amounts of state. So I've given an example here. So let's say we have a Spark streaming application and that is tracking the user activities on a website in real time, just like we have seen previously in the Clickstream example. Now it might maintain state for each user session. So let's say uh, for each of the user, for each of the users, it is maintaining certain things like user ID, last visited page and the time of the last activity and what we want to understand is the identify active users and then how the user journeys look like across the web pages and also we want to see how the users are engaging over time now as the number of users grow over a period of time so the the streaming application should be able to handle the increased memory overhead and also it should be fault tolerant now in spark streaming application we have something called a state store and that is used for handling the stateful operations so we have two kinds of uh, state store provider so one is hdfs and the other one is rocks tv so it is available from spark 3.2 so when we will write an example we will see and understand both of these the hdfs and the rocks tv so Definitely maintaining this a large amount of state is going to be challenging in any kind of a stream processing application, whether it is Spark streaming or whether it is something like Kafka streams. The next challenge in a streaming application is high throughput and low latency. So what I mean is in any kind of stream processing application, the goal should be how to achieve high throughput and the latency should be as low as possible. Now let's talk about throughput. What exactly is throughput? So 
by definition the ability of the system to process the large volume of data efficiently within a given time frame so it it talks about the the volume of the data so what is latency the time it takes for the system to process an event and produce a result so while throughput talks about the volume of the data the latency talks about the time it takes to process the data now in spark streaming application or any other stream processing application like apache flink we do have certain configuration options and different kind of processing models for example the stateful processing or the stateless processing that we can utilize to achieve high throughput or low latency use cases we also need to understand that there will always be a trade off between throughput and latency based on the application needs so if your application requirement is high throughput maybe you will negotiate a little bit with the latency but if your application requires very low latency maybe you will you will shake hands with okay i am okay with a little less throughput and all but yeah there will always be a trade off so keep that in mind the next challenge in stream processing is exactly once processing now what exactly is this exactly once processing well that's a word em i played just right now so okay so this is simply the guarantee that each of the record will be processed only once regardless of failures or retries so now uh, stream processing systems generally are distributed processing applications and there are various nodes involved maybe more than 100 nodes and let's say one of the node crashes so how will the system we have in those cases now there can be scenarios where the data is processed twice or more than once so let's say there is a failure and the system needs to recover from that so what it will need to do it will need to replay the data from a source to recover the state information and then this reprocessing can potentially lead to duplicate data right so these are the problems that we need to take care while doing while writing or developing any kind of stream processing application so here is an example of that let's say there is a stream processing application that tracks the number of user purchases in real time so now it will it is actually receiving a continuous stream of purchase events and for each event it is updating the state variable like what is the total purchase count now what can be the problem let's say during the processing one of the nodes uh, gets crashed now when the system is uh, recovering from that failure now what can happen is that event can be read twice and that can result to incorrect count right so how can we handle that so the first one is idempotent operations so we need to design our stream processing application in such a way that the operations are idempotent so even if the data is read twice and they are pro processed twice then also the result remains the same checkpointing is let's say certain operations are completed the set of events are already read and they are already processed then the intermediate state is flushed to the some kind of system let's say disk where the current state is dumped and now let's say the system crash happened now when the system is recovering it will read the state from the persistent disk and then it knows from where it needs to start again so idempotent operations and also checkpointing can help us achieve exactly once processing and also in the coming videos we'll be having a look at how to achieve this exactly once processing some of the other challenges in stream processing is like how to handle the load imbalance and stragglers so let's say we have a streaming application and the data is continuously coming in now the data that is getting processed and also remember that a streaming application can be distributed across different nodes now one node can be processing less data the other node can be processing large amount of data so we need to understand how to how to actually distribute the data evenly between the nodes so that the load is balanced also we need to understand how to handle the stragglers so what is a, what exactly is a straggler so it is a slow task lagging behind the others and that can create a domino effect 
because it can also affect the downstream tasks. So, so we need to handle the stragglers and also the load imbalance in any kind of stream processing application. The next is joining with external data sources. Now, as we understand, the streaming application will be continuously reading the data in a fast-paced manner. And if you're going to read a different system, let's say there is a static data lying in the, the RDBMS like Oracle, and you are reading the data from there, you are joining the data that is read from the static table to uh, the data that is processed in the streaming application in real time, that can reduce latency. Right now, let's say your uh, your requirement is very low latency within seconds, within milliseconds. Then this can introduce the delay, right? So you need to take care of how you are going to handle the joins in your streaming application. Also, the there can be different formats. Uh, let's say the data that is lying is in the file system in plain CSV or or text format. And it can be like structured in RDBMS. So our streaming applications should be able to handle them and efficiently join, efficiently do the joins, right? So these all things we need to take care while designing the stream processing applications. So by now, I hope you will have a good idea about what are the different challenges in stream processing. These are not exhaustive. Uh, but what I mean by that is you may face different kind of other challenges as well when you start working on in any kind of stream processing applications. But these are kind of very general challenges that anyone can face in any kind of stream processing application. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.